Light some fireworks and watch your grandmother commit murder because Detective Holmes is on the case. No, not that one. Or that one. Or that one. Much better. Enola Holmes is Netflix's latest adventure caper starring Millie Bobby Brown as Sherlock Holmes's cunning and fearless younger sister. So come along with me as we take a deep dive into the mystery and solve how this guy plays the best evil British man in every role he plays. But before we get into it, make sure to like and subscribe so you won't miss any of the latest videos. Enola spells alone backwards, just like if you rearrange Think Story, you get Stinky Thor. For much of her life, Enola has been alone, with only her mother, Beatrix Lestrange, as her only friend. Her father died when she was young, and her older brothers Mycroft and Sherlock are so absorbed in their own lives, they're never around. They're so oblivious to Enola that when she comes to pick them up at the train station, they don't even recognize her. While Enola is pretty steadfast in her ways throughout the entirety of the film, it's actually Sherlock who I'd argue undergoes the most change. Enola confronts him about how he never visits or writes. Mycroft even says, You never cared about her before? She's only 16. Sherlock is continually confronted by his abandonment of both his mother and Enola, and only when Enola goes missing does Mrs. Lane tell him straight up, You've already abandoned her once, sir. I'm asking that you don't abandon her again. Sherlock spends the rest of the film searching for his sister, eventually telling Mycroft that he will take her on as his ward. He won't abandon her again. But the real story centers around Enola and her search for her mother. She needs to realize that while her name spells alone backwards, being alone doesn't mean you're lonely. Being alone doesn't mean I have to be lonely. She wanted me to find my freedom, my future my purpose. And that's what Enola's journey is all about, finding herself in a world that is changing just as rapidly as herself. She needs to find her place in this world rather than others finding it for her. There are two paths you can take, Enola. Yours or the path others choose for you. On the other hand, Mycroft wants Enola to conform to the traditional ways of society, for her to find and serve a husband as the obedient wife. She's later taken to Miss Harrison's school for young ladies, where she learns such important skills like how to properly laugh, <laughs> <laughs> embroider, and walk. Contrast this to what her mother taught her, jujitsu, science, and archery. Enola Holmes is all about carving your own path and not conforming to a world that seeks to control you. And Mycroft is the perfect encapsulation of this. You want me controlled? Because otherwise you think I will affect your standing. Yeah. You are my ward! and you will do as you are told! The real story begins when Enola's mother mysteriously vanishes, leaving Enola a gift wrapped in purple cloth. Purple was often a color used by the suffragettes in their fight for the vote, and we'll see at Eudoria's secret female meetup that they all wear purple ribbons, as well as the purple ribbon that denotes the location of one of their hideouts. Although the events in the movie take place around the year 1900, it wouldn't be until 1903 the Women's Social and Political Union was founded in the UK, whose members later became known as suffragettes. Her journey takes her on a train to London where she meets the Viscount of Tewkesbury on the run from his overbearing family. Like Enola, his family and society have dictated what his life will be. He'll end up joining the military like his father and uncle and become a lord, something he's scared he'll hate every minute of. They form a bond, two people fighting against a system that has forced them to be something they aren't. In London, Enola searches for Edith Grayston, a woman who corresponded with her mother regularly and who also happens to run a sweet jiu-jitsu class for women above a tea shop. In a brief tussle, Enola attempts the corkscrew, a difficult jiu-jitsu move that she doesn't quite pull off, but it's a great setup since she'll use this very same move to take down one of the film's villains in the final act. I know jiu-jitsu. I know kung fu. Enola uses her powers of deduction and realizes the name Ellie Houseman, a word she heard her mother say during the secret meeting, isn't a name at all. When you rearrange the letters, you get a location, Limehouse Lane, which leads her to a warehouse filled with bombs bombs used by the suffragettes. There are instances of women using violence in their fight for equal rights. Christabel Pankhurst, one of the leaders of the movement in Britain, said, If men throw a bomb that destroys other people, it is then described as a glorious and heroic deed. Why should a woman not make use of the same weapons as men? It is not only war we have declared, we are fighting for a revolution. Her investigation is short-lived when she's attacked by the man in the bowler hat who is looking for Lord Tewkesbury. And this is where not being your average girl comes to 
to her advantage as she's able to fight him off and escape, later recounting a story of her as a child saving a sheep from a cliff that almost got her killed. We actually see this in a quick flashback near the end of the film. Enola is one to put her life on the line for those that are vulnerable, and right now she knows Lord Tewksbury is in need. A murderer is after him and she's compelled to help, just like she helped that sheep years ago. In search of answers, she heads to the Tewksbury's, posing as both a widow and Sherlock Holmes's assistant. We meet Inspector Lestrade from Scotland Yard, who's been assigned the case. Fun fact, Lestrade is an anagram for Dearest L, a reference to author Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's first wife, Louisa. She ends up being chased away, finding the Viscount's treehouse and getaway plan, which will later lead her to his location at Covent Garden Market. Cause you know, he loves flowers and stuff. But more interesting are Enola's discovery of the cut down tree and her conversation with the Dowager, or Lord Tewksbury's grandmother. We'll later find out that the tree that fell and almost killed the young Viscount wasn't an accident, but that it was cut down in an attempt to murder him. The entire film is set against the backdrop of a giant reform bill that's about to be passed. We aren't exactly sure what's in this bill, only that if passed, it will allow more people to vote and will undoubtedly change the very future of Great Britain. There's one thing this country doesn't need. It's more uneducated voters. It's this reform bill that sparks the Dowager to hire a hitman to kill her son and grandson. Lord Tewksbury is a liberal who would vote for the bill, but if he were to be killed, his uncle would become Lord and vote against the bill. The Dowager's way of life is at stake if this bill were to pass, and she's willing to kill her own son and grandson to maintain the status quo. As she says to Enola earlier on, As the world becomes increasingly unstable, it feels important that these ideas of England are preserved. When Enola is rescued from Miss Harrison's School for Young Ladies by Tewksbury, she has the choice to confront the murderous dowager or hide in London. There'll come a time when you have to make a hard choice in that moment. You will discover what metal you truly have and what you're prepared to risk. For what matters. The ability to have freedom to make your own choices is one of the film's biggest themes, like Enola's choice to wear a corset even though she says it represents oppression, or her choice to go back and save the Viscount on the train. Her choices define who she is as a character, and she's not going to let society dictate who she is. She's going to make that choice for herself. The choice is always yours. Whatever society may claim, it can't control you. The Dowager reveals herself as the film's real villain, a relic of a country still trying to hold on to its old ways. She shoots her grandson, who we find grabbed a piece of armor which protected him from the bullets. And I'm kinda upset the film missed a great opportunity for Millie Bobby Brown to go all jujitsu on grandma. I also love Tewksbury's last line to the Dowager. Your time is over. This line isn't just directed to the Dowager herself, but to everything she represents, the old ways of repression irreceptive to change. With the plot to kill young Tewksbury stymied, he becomes the deciding vote in the reform bill's passing, as Britain moves into a new era of change. Sherlock finds he's outsmarted not once, but twice by his little sister. First, when she solves the Tewksbury case before he does, and twice, when she evades his plot to meet her outside the Royal Academy, an institution known for not including including women. But the final dramatic scene belongs to Enola and her mother. The person she spent almost the entire movie trying to find comes to her. She says she left her because I couldn't bear to have this world be your future, so I had to fight. You have to make some noise if you want to be heard. And that's what Enola has done throughout the film. She's made noise, she's made change, she's learned that her life isn't dictated by others, and that by forging her own path, the future is in her hands. My life is my own. And the future is up to us. Thanks for watching everyone. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to like and subscribe, and for more bad takes, come follow me on Twitter and Instagram at ThinkStoryYT. Until next time, remember, Daddy loves you very much.